Hey everyone, it's me, Shelby, from Mainly Home Spun. Um, I'm just tuning on. So, I started this jewelry armoire yesterday. I said I was going to start it. So, I had a different plan for this. Um, I was going to use uh, Spring Branch Transfer, but uh, it, the color ended up being, like, it's super dark once it dries. I, it, it looks way more green in the container than it does on here. Uh, in terms of the color and how it turned out, I'm not mad about that at all. I think it's a beautiful color. Um, but I did have to change my plan a little bit. So I ended up using our Rose Celebration Transfer, which I've had for a while. And I do love this transfer. This is one of the first transfers I used. Oh, my knife's right there. So, um, it's really, really pretty. I love the colors. The blue. I mean, look at that. That's just gorgeous. I love the scroll. I just think it's a really pretty, um, like, soft transfer. It's really, really nice. Um, I've used this on a cream color, like buttercream, which I'm going to do the stripes in. Um, I've used it on a yellow and now I've used, I've used it on like a blue like this, um, a darker blue and like a pea green, um, which is holy guacamole from Dixie Belle. It's a beautiful color. And I've used it on that and it worked phenomenal and it definitely works, you know, on this blue. So I think our, one of the things I love about the pre transfers is that honestly, the possibilities are endless. You can combine them with any color. I mean, the, and it's, it's really quite amazing. I'm, I love that aspect of them, um, because you can create so many different looks. So I'm going to start, uh, this was a slick surface. Now on the silk paint, which is what this was first time I used it, it does say degloss and scuff, clean and remove any wax, um, for increased durability, get two coats. Uh, da, da, da. Pla glass laminate, glass plastic may require light sanding and slick stick. So this is like, this jewelry box was one of those like slick surfaces, um, like most are, but I didn't slick stick it, stick it. I just cleaned it. Um, and I put two coats on and I let it dry thoroughly and it's pretty rugged. I mean, I'm scratching it and it's not doing anything. It's like not even scuffing. Or discoloring. Sometimes it'll discolor a little bit, and then if you kind of like wipe it off, you know, it'll um, be how it was, but it's not even actually doing that. So, in terms of this paint, I'm pretty impressed. I really like it. I'll definitely buy more colors um, for sure. So, I'm just going to start taping my piece. Of course, I got it way off. Uh, what is this? I love this tape. Duck? Duck tape? Duck masking tape? Um, I get a bunch of these. It's like a six pack at, um, Harbor Freight. And, uh, they're cheap and they're, it's good. Um, when you're doing stuff like this, one, if, before you put tape on your piece, you need to make sure it's fully dry um, because you don't want it to pull, tape, pull your paint off. So this one, I, this paint is obviously way durable than like the regular because it has the primer and built-in top coat. So it's obviously more durable on its own than the regular chalk paint. Um, but regardless, you want to have a really good thorough dry time. I like this tape um, because I don't have usually issues of it pulling my paint off, even if I am impatient and don't wait. Um, it sticks and doesn't bleed, but it doesn't peel your paint off either. Um, you could also use frog tape. Uh, personally, I. I don't know. I have to be in the mood for frog tape. I feel like it doesn't. I have a hard time keeping it um, sticking. 
I don't know why, but that always seems to be the case when I use it, so I've just stopped using it. This is cheaper. It works for me. May not work for you, but you have to, you know, figure out what works for you. I've tried this tape, frog tape, scotch tape. I do use scotch tape, um, like the blue painter's tape. I mean, I don't know why I said scotch tape. Um, that, that I do use quite a bit. Um, but I'm not going to use it for this. I, when I'm doing stripes, I usually use this because it's cheap. Um, so that's another reason why I use it. The other paint, the other tapes are expensive. And I do stripes so much, especially lately. Um, I just don't, you know, I just prefer it. It's a win-win for everything. Okay, so, striping. You can measure it. You could... Take, you know, a piece of tape and put it between and then line up your next piece, okay? If you do not trust yourself to do it straight and even, I definitely suggest that method. However, I do this so much, um, I don't tend to do that. I also just kind of like, you know, sometimes it's a little off, but um, it doesn't bother me. Like the bottom, for example. Usually I catch myself, like I said, I've been doing this for a while now, so I kind of, I hope that sticks flat. I kind of can just eyeball it, but So, I'm kind of doing like a rustic, grungy age look on this, so I'm not going to worry too much about my coverage for these stripes. I definitely want a good coverage, but I'm not going to like let it dry and then go over it again. I'm just going to do like a kind of medium, medium coat on it. Um, so I'm using buttercream for my stripes. I feel like buttercream always looks so good against these blues because it's got like that little bit of yellow tint to it. I did a jewelry armoire sort of similar with stripes and like the rust bronze um, which was stunning and I actually got that off of it was off of something Tracy Fancy did. I can't remember what it was though. I want to say like a dresser but I'm not sure. End table? Something like that. Nightstand? So as you can see this is why, zoom in, this is why I taped the edges, um, so I don't have to worry about kind of getting it all over the place. So usually when I'm doing stripes, um, I would tape the like edge here where I'm painting, that would be tape instead. But where this door is so narrow, I really didn't want to have, like, only three stripes. I wanted, you know, kind of that extra, extra stripe in there. Oh, I got something in my paint. Get that over here. There we go. So, uh, you could do stripes a lot of different ways. I usually paint mine on. You could roll them. You could stamp them and blend them with different colors. Uh, I mean... Well, you could do anything. The one thing, if you are painting or roll, um, with a brush, um, one thing I do suggest is kind of getting your paint in place and then picking one direction and swiping either all the way down or all the way up for more, you know, a more clean finish. Um, that way you don't have like 8 million brush strokes in your... straight so again um, in terms of dry time like right now I'm gonna use the heat gun because I want to add the transfer on here and do my leopard print um, I don't know why but I haven't used it in a while and I really wanted to use it so I added the leopard print stencil onto this and I love it 
it's it's fun but subtle um like a kind of subtle pop of glam so there so that's all I'm doing I'm not gonna do another coat on this um, I don't feel like it's necessary for kind of the look I'm going for if you want to obviously you can the other reason why I didn't slick stick this too um, is because I didn't know what that was I didn't know if I was gonna distress it um, I ended up not distressing it with a sanding paper I just added kind of like a grunge look with my grunge glaze from Dixie Belle and uh, and um, the copper gilding wax that I talked about yesterday, which is gorgeous color. Um, I'm gonna go grab a rag really quick so I can wrap my brush up. If I know I'm gonna be like using a brush and sitting around doing a live or I'm not going to be rinsing it off immediately. I, my husband has a bunch of these shop rags. So I grab a shop rag, I take my brush, I spray a bunch of water on it, and then I wrap it up. You could also just, like, rinse it off. Um, I also do that, but it just depends on what your preference is. Um, you could also just have, like, a tub of water out here so that it stays... Um, is wet. I always take my tape off pretty much immediately after I do my paint. Um, I highly suggest doing that. If you let it dry, it might stick to your um, you know, dry on there and it might be harder to get off. So I had a little flub there, so I'm just going to wipe it away before I dry these. Um, I'm just going to come on with the, oh, I have a little flub there too, but I can, um, sand that down later. <clears throat> uh, this is my heat gun. I got it for $15 at Harbor Freight. It's called a Warrior. It has two heat settings. Um, I think it's fantastic for the price. I love it. I use it for epoxy. It's what you can see right there. Um, I use it for epoxy. It gets warm enough to use, um, to move the, around the epoxy. Uh, and it was cheap. So I really am happy with this purchase. All right, I'm going to dry these stripes. Thank you, Shayna. I'm trying to branch out a little bit. <laughs> um, if you are new watching and you haven't seen me using the heat gun, you do not want to get that close to your piece. You want to say at least probably eight inches, six inches away. I'm, I think it suggests more, but um, if you get it too close, you run the risk of bubbling your paint. So just be aware of that. I also try not to stay in one place too long. You want to keep it fluid and moving. This is the high setting. You could also do it on the low setting. Just take another minute or two. So 
the new silk paint, it says that it has a built-in top coat, which definitely does, like, the durability is insane. Like I said, the scratch test is phenomenal. Um, however, where I'm adding transfers on top, uh, I still need to seal. So do be aware of that. Anytime you add a transfer on top of something, unless it's glass, um, like a mirror or a window or something like that, you're going to have to seal. Okay. I so I have we're gonna fit our transfer now, but I need to throw the scissors. Um scissors and oh my goodness. Take a digger here a second. Yeah, okay. So, for my transfer piece, um, this is a little too wide for the door, so we're going to have to fit it. I'm also going to cut out, I think, like right here. I'm going to kind of get it at an angle. When you, well, when I cut transfers, I save everything, even like the smallest piece, because <laughs> they're great for like filling in, or if you have a spot where you cut out maybe too much, or it's kind of like a weird shape, you can kind of fill it in, catch it in. Um, so I, I do, plus it's, they're, it's money. You don't want to throw away money. Um, I use every scrap that I, I possibly can. So, I'm going to kind of. Actually, I'm going to cut that word out. So I'm just kind of cutting around what I don't want. I don't know if I'll actually use this. I might use it on the top. We'll see. So I'm just going to place that to the side. Now I'm going to... So I, this is actually kind of convenient for... Oh, I'm so sorry. I hate when the camera does that. It was me crazy. Um, I'm going to... So it has kind of like this trim work here. I always cut that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna line up this side. So I'm just gonna cut this part because I'm gonna cut probably like right here. It looks like just about right there. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that in a second. This piece is actually very convenient because the doors don't swing open. They kind of are set inside and pop open. Um. So yeah, just cut along that line. I mean, you don't really have to do this, but for my, I just like to, it's a lot easier for me to line everything up. Okay, so this door, like I said, it pops open. So I'm going to use this, obviously, as my cutting line. I'm not going to take the transfer onto the frame. So I'm going to line it up here on the bottom. Do you see that? I get it. There we go. So I'm going to line this corner up here. Um, if you feel like you need to, you could tape this so you can cut, you know, mark your area better. But <clears throat> I'm just going to take my scissors and make the little slit. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just trust myself to cut straight straight up the line. Um, let's see if that was a good idea. You could definitely, let me cut this first. Uh, you could definitely, which I brought over so you could see, um, if you wanted to tape it up and then kind of start your cut with the scissors, you could tape it and then you could use a utility knife and just slice all the way down. If you are going to do that, please have a sharp blade. If you don't, you run the risk of pulling your transfer, ruining it, getting it stuck together just because you're trying to pull it and it's not breaking apart. So just kind of, you know. All right, so I did cut a little wonky. 
but not bad. I'm gonna get this edge cleared off a little bit. I'm gonna have other things going on too, so that looks pretty good to me. If there's any extra, you can just um, cut it off. I'm gonna cut this edge a little bit too, because you can kind of see where it bumps out there. Okay, so I'm gonna start with that. So I'm gonna peel my not from that end though. So I'm gonna peel, when you get a transfer, it has this backing so that it doesn't stick. You're gonna peel that away. So you're just on the translucent paper, or plastic, I guess. Right? Now, try your very best not to touch the transfer itself, but obviously, you know, sometimes if you're lining things up like I am, it just has to be that way. Oops. So I might need to trim up a little bit. Um, I'll worry about that in a second. I'm just gonna, so every transfer comes with this one transfer stick. I will say I'm very aggressive <laughs> with these sometimes. I did break one yesterday. There would, um, Prima sells plastic ones, which I also broke. Um, it's been a while though. I didn't break that one the same day I opened it. But, They do make those, which is, I really like those actually a lot. It's double-sided, um, so it has like a larger side and a smaller side, which is great because, you know, sometimes you just need two different sizes. So I do love that. I don't sell those. I should, though. I should just buy a bunch because even if I don't sell them, I'll, I'll use them. So look how pretty this is. This just works. I love it. I was not upset that the color ended up being more blue than green. Um, I think it's beautiful. So you shouldn't have to like rub really hard. Obviously I do because I broke one of these and the plastic ones, but you really shouldn't have to. Um, I mean, you definitely have to rub. I will say sometimes the new Prima transfers, the newer releases, if you're layering them on top of each other, like I did on the front here, this is not a different, like two transfers together, but I did layer pieces together. Sometimes that you do just have to give a little more elbow grease when you're doing that, but you still shouldn't have to rub that hard. It's super important to make sure that your paint is dry. If not, your transfer won't stick. It'll peel your paint. It'll be a mess. You'll lose your transfer. So sometimes I know it's hard to wait, but Patience will be worth it on this. Like, I just dried these stripes with the dryer. But um, yesterday when I did the other side, I did let them dry on their own time. And I didn't have any problem with the transfer, which I don't think I'll have a problem with the transfer now either. But if you're newer, I definitely suggest trying to be patient and wait it out, even though sometimes I understand it can be hard. I'm definitely like an instant result person when it comes to my furniture because I'm just so excited to like see what it's going to be and get it done. But it is important to make sure that you're doing it properly. Okay, so my knife is not sharp, but it's sharp enough to cut all this excess off. So I'm just going to... Maybe it's not. I don't know. So I'm just going to follow the inner edge and I'm just going to pull it away. Um, this edge has a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about it, at least cutting it because it's so thin. I honestly don't even know if like it would be worth trying to cut. So what you can do pop this open, um, is take your transfer and just rub it along this edge and the transfer should kind of peel. If you make that crease along the edge, um, it should, the excess should peel off with your, 
with your um, plastic. Sometimes that doesn't happen. If it doesn't, just sand it down. Like I've painted this edge. So if it ends up getting folded on there, I'll just sand it off and then I'll repaint it. It's not a big deal. Or I might just leave it on there because I'm not really even sure what I'm gonna do with my edges yet. Sometimes I do um, kind of fold it over onto the edges. Sometimes I keep it clean. It kind of just depends. I think the other side I kept clean, so I'll probably keep the side clean too. So yeah, just kind of take it and I hear some screaming in there. Okay. So I'm gonna start peeling my film away. I'm gonna start here. Let me see if I can zoom. First, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try and move you over a little bit. And I'm gonna try and zoom. So as you can see, this is really just peeling right away. I highly suggest rubbing as you're peeling away. That will make the process a lot easier. So, depending on the piece, usually I go like side and across. Sometimes if it's small, I just go down. Um, it just kind of depends. I work in one direction and go another, at, le at the very least. Um, so right now I'll do the side. I'll work from the side and across. I didn't do a very good job working down in this corner, it seems. It's sometimes hard to get into those corners. All right, so now I'm just gonna peel. I might move it down a little bit. Now I'm just gonna rub and peel across. But as you can see, I'm not like rubbing really hard or anything. I'm gonna pop this open and get this edge a little better. There we go. So now that I've kind of got towards the middle, if you see that you've pulled up a piece, it's fine. Just go back and rub it again and it will it will blend. It's not a big deal. Um, I also find that rubbing as you peel back really helps prevent bubbles. Um, if you do get bubbles, um, your piece will not seal properly. Um, the sealer can sometimes penetrate those bubbles and then it'll pull from your piece, maybe not immediately, but eventually. So if you're, it might not, it might not, you might get lucky, but um, you know, if, you're, if you sell pieces, you know, in two months you might get a call like, hey, so this happened, <laughs> you know, like from a client saying that, that it happened and then you have to make it right. Just make it right from the beginning. It's my, oh, that was paint. I didn't realize there was a blob of paint there. Okay, so you got your, I'm just gonna get out any wrinkles. So you got, you survived your first transfer. Now, what do you do? Um, you need to take a soft cloth and burnish your piece, which I don't have a clean one here. Now, burnishing your piece, mean, when you burnish, that means you're gonna take, take a cloth, a soft cloth, and rub. You wanna rub, 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 rub. Now, I did a pretty good job on this. There's no bubbles, there's no wrinkles. Um, Burnishing your piece, make sure you get all the wrinkles, the bubbles, and make sure that the edges are adhered, like I said again, so your sealer doesn't come through. And it kind of gets rid of this little outline, which does fade over time. Um, there's a lot of people, like newbies, who get worried about that. Some transfers, when you're blending them together, these most of these are large, so they come in sections, three pages, four pages, depending on what it is. So when you do have a piece like the bottom piece and you're putting in a middle piece, you are going to want to cut um, like those edges that I cut off. 
there's a little, you can't see it because it's translucent, translucent, but at the end, there's a little piece of clear transfer around the edge, all the edges. So if you're putting a big transfer together, you are going to want to take, you know, like I said, your middle, whatever two, two sheets are meeting, you're going to want to cut that clear part off because if you don't, you will be able to see it when you're blending them. You need to cut those two pieces off. Um, I've made that mistake before. Sometimes you just forget. Uh, but you will be able to see it. Not always, but most times. And um, a lot of new people uh, new to the transfers either don't know that or, you know, whatever. So definitely make sure you do that if you're doing a big transfer and you're putting the two pieces together. Honestly, I don't think I've ever had a transfer where I put all the sheets together and had like this big floral. Um, I usually cut them up like this and I put them, how you know, individually. Uh, hold on, excuse me. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I did do a while ago, I did my daughter's um, changing table. And I use the Hello Baby transfer. And it has like little animals. So I had like this little bunny and this little fox. I can't remember. Or I think the bear um, was in half. And I had to cut both edges to make it seamless. And it, it it is seamless. I mean, you can't even tell it was in two pieces. It's actually amazing. But you have to cut those translucent edges. It's super important for that seamless look. Um, because you will see them, which is weird because they are clear. It's just clear transfer, but you you will see it. So do be aware of that. So I'm just rubbing. I'm going to pop this open because I want to rub these edges. I want to make sure these edges are really on. Okay. Rub, 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 rub. Again, I don't feel like I need to rub this for hours. Sometimes... Sometimes I have to rub for a long time. Um, it just kind of depends. Okay, so. Next we have grunge glaze. I haven't used grunge glaze in a very long time. I've been doing more like these glam pieces. So I haven't been able to use it. And once I got this step done, I was like, you know what? I kind of want to take this to the grunge side. I think it will look really nice. Kind of give it that grungy country country vibe, um, which is sort of what I was going for, but took it up a notch with the cheetah leopard stencil. Um, so all of these paint products are Dixie Belle, by the way. I don't know if I've said that. So I've got my grunge glaze. Um, like I said, I use a lot of this. This comes in four ounces and eight ounces. I don't know if it comes in 16 ounces. So honestly, I usually shake it and work out at the top. Um, the other thing is, where I'm, if you're going to put like extras on like this, waxes, definitely make sure um, that your transfer is down. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to see on the camera, but this really kind of it darkens the colors, which I love. I'm not gonna lie, this popping door is not ideal for working, <laughs> but I do like it, because it can just be like, Ooh. So I am pretty much just rubbing this all over the bare paint slots. I'm not gonna rub too much of it on like where the transfers are. It's not that you can't. You can definitely put these over transfers. I've done that plenty of times. Um, sorry, I don't know. There we go. I'm going to stick there. I just don't. I mean, there's some spots here, like, where there's paint that I have to rub in. See, I'm pretty sure that the camera's not, not showing it, but it did kind of take, it took it down a notch. It's definitely darker, grungy. So, um, I wish that, that kind of came through the camera better. But. So the grunge takes, it doesn't take super long to dry, but it does take a little bit of time. 
So um, I'm going to... I am going to kind of use the heat gun on it a little bit, but I did the legs too, the metallic bronze that I sprayed. I also did this in layers because I didn't know how, grun like how grungy and dark I wanted it at first, but I ended up doing, I think like two coats. And this will, this will darken and you know grunge as it dries too so doing it in layers is definitely best because you can always add more i just love how it changes this like i said i don't really think you can see it on the camera um the way i can see it in person but it really just oh, i love grunge glaze especially if you do like a lot of rustic or farmhouse or like even french French chic inspired, really anything like that. This, the grunge is ideal. All right, let me use what's left out of my cap. So pretty much everything, Dixie Belle stuff is water-based. So when you're mixing like the paints and the grunge and glaze, um, that's all water-based. The only thing that obviously isn't is the waxes. So in order of product here, you can, in terms of like the grunge and the waxes, you can layer those however you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, like I'm doing the grunge before my sealer because it's water-based. Uh, you could do it. I've also done it after my sealer. The only thing that you're going to want to wait on is your wax. You're going to want to seal or into your wax, or you could wax and then seal depending on what you're doing. However, for, you'd have to wait for the wax to fully dry before you could seal it. So, I mean, I, I don't usually ever do that. I usually seal it, let it dry and then wax and then buff because the wax will cure just like the sealer will, but if you do like your wax and then your sealer, you'd have to wait a while for it to dry. And if you're producing stuff to sell, that might not be ideal. Um, so let me close this. I've got all my supplies in the top here. All right, so I'm going to kind of let that do its thing. I will also like grunge in here in the top and I will add um, the gilding wax as well. So I'm just going to shut this and I'm going to show you the gilding wax um, on this edge here and how pretty and how smooth it is. Oh, I love it. The copper color is gorgeous. Um, it's really, really beautiful which works perfect with this blue and the creams and the bronze florals and it's it really all the colors are perfect for one another so i'm just going to take the heat gun to this i actually don't really know if the heat gun does anything with the glaze but we're going to see Okay, now we're going to do the stick and style stencil, which I haven't used in a long time. I actually love these. I have to get more of them um, because I really do like them a lot. And they're really easy to use and I'll show you kind of how they look when you first get them. So I'm gonna be using the leopard, okay? They're stick and style, so they're sticky. Which is great because you can just stick it on like you don't have to worry about holding it. I'm going to put that up there for a second. So when you get it, it comes in this roll like this. Sorry, is it something up there? Um, it comes in this roll. I cannot remember how long they are, but as you can see, I still have quite a bit left. 
Um, it comes with like this paper that you, which I lost. So I put plastic, like a piece of plastic bag on it, but it comes with this paper that you can put on the edge after you're done cutting whatever amount you need. And then you kind of roll it back up and you can put it in the little box that it comes in. I love this. I have like a big metal, like garage unit, um, like a mechanic almost with like all these little boxes that pull out. So everything's labeled and I stick these in one of those drawers. Um, so I love these because one, you only need a little bit at a time because you can reuse it because it sticks. I used this yesterday afternoon and it's still sticky. Now, in terms of the stickiness, you need to be careful um, on your transfers because this is sticky. These are paper, you know, they're thin. If you stick it on, it could pull. So if you are going to use these over a transfer or like layering over a transfer, I do suggest sealing your transfer first and protecting it so that when you put the sticky stencil on, when you pull it away, you're not going to pull um, your transfer off because that would be a bummer. So these are really cool, reusable. Um, I, you know, I mean, I will throw this away after I do the side because I don't need it anymore. But if I was doing a big project, I could probably use this for a few more days. You could also like stick this. I've been letting it just hang off of stuff. Um, if you wanted to prolong the life, you could put it on like a piece of plastic, like you know, some of that transfer um, backing, the clear stuff, and then pull it off of there and use it. You can also, um, you know, if you have a chunk out and it's still good, but it's not sticky, take some adhesive spray and spray the back and stick it on. The only thing is um, you want to be careful of that because you don't want it, oops, you don't want it permanently on there. This is starting to lose its stick a little bit, but um, I don't need it super like sticky to do this because I'm just doing a little bit. So this is my copper gilding wax. I've mixed it already, which I hate doing because I'm so messy and I feel like I get it everywhere and it makes, I feel like I lose so much product on it. So I need to like figure out how to not do that. So this dries, it's, this dries, um, uh, da, 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 da. Like gilding wax dry for four hours lately buff after 12 to produce a beautiful gilded finish. This is permanent. So once it dries, you don't have to worry about it. I use this a lot for hardware or like drawer hin uh, hinges, door hinges, stuff like that. Um, I have this brush, but I honestly, you know, you can use your finger, you can use a brush, you can use a sponge as it says on the directions. So I'm going to be very careful around my transfer, but I am going to kind of layer it. It's not super sticky, so I'm not super worried about it, but so I usually, how much is this? I don't know if this says how much is in here. Ugh. This is a big container and it's very deep and I'm just working out of the cap and a little goes a long way. So I literally just take my finger, dab it on. And then I'll, um, let me see. Zoom in a little bit more for you. Sorry, you guys. And sometimes, like, I add more. Sometimes I do less. It just kind of depends. I'm actually just going to rub it instead of pat it. I also try to kind of start narrow and work my way wider and then narrow in a downward angle is usually what I do. I kind of always tend to do that. And also randomness is good. Like seriously, look at that, it's gorgeous. So be super careful over here because this is where the transfers are. Like I said, it's not super sticky right now. So I'm not overly worried about it. Now, if you have a flub and you, you know, say peel some of your transfer off, I'm actually going to put that little liner up there too, and you peel some of your transfer off, 
If you think you can do it, one, don't panic. Two, take some paints and just do the best you can to get the same colors and fill it in. Try your best to blend it. I tell you what, so many people are like, oh, I messed this up. I mean, not everyone can do that. Not everyone is artistic or has the, um, has the confidence that they feel like they can do it without messing it up. But um, I'm gonna add a little bit more to this edge. But I promise you, you can. Um, just don't freak out. Usually they are easy fixes. I'm actually gonna take this out here a little bit more and then kind of let it. All right, that's it. Look how beautiful that is. So I'm just gonna discard that little section now. Um, since I have the gilding wax, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna rub it on the side. I pretty much put this everywhere after I did the grunge glaze. I wasn't sure how much, I knew I wanted it grungy, but I wasn't sure how much um, copper metallic I would want. Um, but I did end up adding quite a bit to there and it worked out. So there is that. Now, we're gonna add some metallic onto these edges here. I'm not gonna work on the bottom. I'll probably just focus on this top right here and then we'll call it quits for today. Again, I'm still working out of my top. Um, I probably will need more soon. But. So I, I kind of just started running it along. less it's probably better to start with a smaller amount first because you can always add more um be careful of running your hand through these it may be best to do the edges first and then this i'm left-handed so that's why it's a little inconvenient space but so in terms of adding these, the wax to the edges, I just kind of do whatever. Sometimes I do a straight line. Sometimes I blend it out with my finger. Sometimes I kind of um, do a swiping motion. Random, just depends. Um, I did take it through the transfers. I did do that. And then I kind of blended it out a little bit for that grunge look. And then I took it from here. Just a little bit. Gentle hand on this is best. You could use your finger too, because it might be easier to just run along the edges. Sometimes I put too much pressure on and I get this like big blob, which is why I'm doing it with a brush. You can blend it out, um, but the wax does tend to like kind of sit once it's on. So you, if you do need to blend it, blend it like immediately, <laughs> um, which I will show you up in the corners because that is what I did in the corners. I just kind of fluffed it here in the corners a little bit and then just kind of took my finger, rubbed it. It's not really coming across super, um, super dark contrast on the camera, but in person. So I'm gonna run this edge, I'm gonna run this edge. I'm just gonna kind of fluff this. I did add copper to the top of the stripes and threw it out a little bit on the other side. So I will do that just to, again, add to the grunge look. Um, I did a very similar look on another jewelry box, which I loved. Again, I got that um, inspiration from Tracy's Fancy. I pretty much took what she did and put it on jewelry or more. I 
then run it very gently along this outer side. I might need to grab some more. All right. Let's move down here. Sorry, I know I'm moving the camera a lot. All right. So I got to kind of get this top along here. Now I'm going to so now I'm just gonna add this to those two next so that's okay. Just blend it out a little bit. If I can kind of take, I had to put a filter on so that it looked bright because it was like, I don't know, dark and like kind of cloudy looking. So I needed to put a filter on, but I'll take the filter off so that you guys can kind of really see. Okay, so here's that. I am going to do this little um, bottom edge right there with my finger and then that's pretty much it for today I'll take the filter off so you guys can kind of see it a little better maybe so when I apply this to like an edge it's kind of like the um when you're doing the stripes once you put it on you know you rub it back and forth it's very smooth so you can kind of drag it out a little bit um but once it's on I kind of just take my finger and I go I swipe one way so that it doesn't sometimes when you're adding it it can um like have marks like finger marks so I do again kind of Add it on and then just swipe one way across. It doesn't matter which way. But... Okay, so where I put my wax on, my gilding wax, um, <clears throat> I'm going to let it dry. I'm pretty much done um, with this. I do have to add some gilding wax to this part and then on the legs, the edges, and then I have to add some stripes onto this part. But I'm pretty much done. So um, once I do the rest of that, I will let this dry. All the wax has to dry for 12 hours. I'll probably let it dry for a couple days. And then I'll seal it. Um, and then it'll be done. I'll have to, I might stamp the sides of the um, drawers. Um, so I'm not really sure. Let me see if I can get out of this. So that's. How it looks without the filter I just feel like it's kind of dark but you can actually see the gilding wax on here and how it looks how different it looks um so that's pretty much what I did to the other side as well like I said I've got to kind of add that stuff on the bottom but that's pretty much the look created um let me see if I can and then that's the front it looks kind of dull it doesn't look so dull in person um i did add there's my stripes and i did add some molds here some of the new molds that i got um i have to add i let them dry these are air dry clay um usually i use casting resin because it only takes 10 minutes to cure um but i don't have any actually 
I did order some that hopefully won't be here soon because I don't have any. Um, I do have to add some copper actually to that, so I'll do that. Actually, we'll just do it right now. I'm thinking of it. I forget. And I will use my brush for that. <clears throat> so, as you can see, I spray painted it. So I got like a pink base here, which is pretty, but I wanted to add more of that copper on there. So I'm just going to brush it in. So um, where this edge was here, this is kind of comes out from this part. Um, so I did have to slice right there with my um, utility knife. Um, with the clay, it's easy because it's soft. I do just have to fill in that edge where I cut it so that it's not air dry clay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of a last minute decision, but I'm glad that I did it because I really like it. I love molds. Um, I got a bunch of molds. I've been using them more and more. They're just so pretty and easy and they give such a good detail and they're awesome with the resin because it takes 10 minutes to cure. I mean, you really can't get any faster than that. So by the time I'm done, you know, doing something else, I'll pour my my casting resin, um, do something else, and then by the time I'm ready to come back, it's done. I do usually take them out a little beforehand because they're still pliable, especially if I'm doing like a curved surface or something like that. I can't remember the name of this one, but this is one of the new ones I just got. These are the ones that I used for here. Where are they? Right there. So I use these ones. Um, it comes with, you know, each direction, left facing left, facing right, you know, however you want to say it. But I got that one. And then I also got um, Prima. Came, gosh, Prima came out with the, on this release. Um, oh, my other one's way over there. Prima came out with a bunch of adorable molds. This release, they have like horses and a little piggy and all kinds of just adorable fun stuff. So yeah, and that's it. Now you know how I got this look. Um, I added, you know, the gilding wax here. I did the same process. So let me see if I can turn, turn this to the side. This is the side that I did yesterday. I usually do one side at a time so that I can pretty much figure out what I'm doing. I don't always know until I get into it a little bit. So. Um, as you can see, I did the stripes, um, here. I could add another mold there if I wanted to, but I don't think I will. I kind of just want to focus on the front. But as you can see, exact match to the other side. The flowers are obviously different. I used a different sheet for the flowers, but, um, pretty much the same, which is what you want. I don't always, um, I, for something like the jewelry armoire, I keep it, I mean, it's, I like to say similar, but not the same. And as in your base needs to be the same, but you know, the florals are going to not be the same. The placement might not be the same. Um, it just depends. It depends on the piece, but yeah, there you go. It's really, really pretty. I love it a lot. Um, I wish I had it on rollers so I could move it easier. But as you can see, in like a kind of fast 360 mode, you know, it's, I do have to add, I think, some more here or make the, these edges maybe a little darker. But I still have some work to do anyway, so there you go. Now you know how I got, uh, got this beautiful... Combination, I actually really love this color with the, um, this transfer. Sorry, I'm actually just going to flip the camera around. Oh, look at that. Wow, the flash is so much better. <laughs>
Um, so there's the top to, and then, uh, the edge, I'm sorry, I'm just going to kind of move around here. So yeah, there you go. If anyone has any questions, you can definitely, um, ask in this post once it goes, um, once it posts to the page. Um, I will answer questions. I think we are going to um, a car show today, actually. My daughters love that stuff, and my youngest loves planes, um, and I don't know if they're going to do planes or not, but um, I actually want to get, like, a screenshot of that right now. Oop, sorry, you guys. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. So if I don't answer questions immediately, that's why. <laughs> Um, but I will answer them um, in a somewhat timely manner. So I hope you guys have a really good Saturday. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.